Welcome back to the breakfast show. And disability, a wise man once said, is not inability. The challenge mostly with living with people with disability is how to communicate with them. It's really difficult to do that. And if you know how to do that, um, people say you're blessed. My guests in the studio are Dr. Kathleen Crowley. She's um, a professor of speech language therapy from the Columbia University. And then I have Alicia Ngozi. She's um, a prize graduate student in speech language therapy. Welcome to the studio. Thank you so Thank much. You. So Kathleen, um, you work with people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing that? How long have you been in Ghana? Oh, uh, well, I've been working, coming to Ghana for the last eight years. Okay. Um, working with uh, people, the hospitals and the schools for students with disabilities um, for eight years. And uh, Alicia's here for her first time. <laughs> but I always bring a group of our graduate students so that they can learn. Okay, work. so Alicia, what have you learned here in Ghana? Wow, I've learned so much in my short stay here in Ghana. Um, we've been able to observe doctors who've worked with um, cleft palate or hole in the mouth mm -hmm. or um, teachers at the unit schools, such as Mary Osei and Belinda Bakari, watching them engage their students, watching them work with students with different abilities and different ages and engage all of them at the same time in the same classroom, mm -hmm. using tools such as a calendar to go over the date, simple name tags to teach literacy, getting them excited about learning. It was just awesome to watch that and I learned so much from them. Okay, Kathleen, so what exactly are you doing? Sure. So we try to, we've been working with um, the hospitals, with Corlibu and Aconfa Noche, because one of the things we do is children are born with cleft lip or palate. Ghana has great cleft palate surgeons here. So they don't need people coming from the outside to do the surgeries. The ones, the, sur the cleft palate teams at Corlibu and Aconfa Noche are world class. But then after the, the palate is repaired, sometimes they need speech therapy. Often the patients need speech therapy. And so we've been working to try to build that up. Um, there's, some there's something showing on the screens as to what some of the things Ah, that's... this is Mary Osi's unit school okay. for students with intellectual disability and autism. And they've created these bags. <clears throat> and there's Mary. And these bags, actually, my niece Claire Crowley came in August for a week to work with Mary and her team. Okay. And everybody got bags for Christmas in my home. <laughs> <laughs> and they were thrilled because they're so beautiful. <laughs> Okay, so how since you've been here for eight years, have you noticed any changes over the pattern? The very much so, very much so, and I'm grateful for it. Um, it, it there still is in Ghana um, and in the United States mm -hmm. prejudice against disabilities. So people may think they're mad or they don't deserve an education. But what we know is from our work in Ghana and our work in the United States. Mm -hmm that people with disabilities can learn. As you said at the very beginning, yeah. disability is not inability, <laughs> right? But there's different ways of learning, perhaps. Okay. It may take someone with disabilities longer to learn, a little slower, but they're still making the beautiful bags that are being sold in the United States, you know? <laughs> and um, I think that there is a change that's happening in the younger generation okay. <clears throat> towards people with disabilities, and we've seen it all over in the last eight years. Really a change where communities are more accepting, where there's not this fear of people with disabilities because as we know, disability is not contagious. It's not a curse. It's not something to be fearful of. It's just something different. I'm five feet 10, you're not. <laughs> uh, you know, I have one green eye and one brown eye. Uh, you know, it, people with disability can have great, do great things. One of our greatest presidents of the United States had polio. Yeah. and couldn't walk, you know. Um, people have, uh, kings of England have had stammers. Um, people, so there's so much that can be done. There's a woman in, in the United States who is a, a PhD. She has autism, but she used her as her uh, experience with autism to help her in her work, and she's world famous for how to help animals go to slaughter. That's what she does and she's able to do it better because she has this strength that she has that she's tapped. So that's just some examples. Yeah, but the, the problem in Ghana with living with people with disabilities yes. or being a disabled person yourself yes. is the stigma associated with yes. this. How do you deal with that when you um, teach people and how do you deal with that? You know, it's a very good question and uh, 
we can't do much. I mean, you know, there, we do benefit from uh, being Americans and coming to Ghana. People think we know more than we know, right? <laughs> and that helps us. So if we say people with disabilities can learn, people with disabilities, disability is not contagious. Mm -hmm. People actually then might listen to us more than they might listen to our Ghanaian colleagues who are extraordinary. So that's one way we hope on a program like this where people will hear, I work with people with disabilities, I have people with disabilities in my family, and the truth is, every family in the world has someone who has some kind of disability. Do they hide it? Do they put them away somewhere? Or do they embrace it? And I think that the change that we're seeing is a shift mm -hmm. in Ghana towards recognizing these are just people with different strengths. Okay. All right, thank you. Alicia, what has impressed you most about um, people living with disabilities in Ghana? Well, like Kate was saying, people with disabilities are talented. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have aspirations, dreams, and goals, and you just have to find the right supports to figure what, what, they, what they can do. And so these bags, I mean, it was some, like our whole group bought some of these bags, but they're just amazing. And watching them work on them, they're making beads, and just, it's just amazing. If you just find the right supports, if you just find the right tools to work with them, I mean, they're, well. yeah, they can <laughs> achieve many things. And so, so in Ghana, being here, watching the teachers um, figure that out, use what they have, may not have as much as we have in the U.S., but they're still making amazing progress. That was just really impressive to see. Well. <laughs> I have something to share. One Thank thing you. that's yeah. I wanted to show you, these are the um, what called market cards. Mm -hmm. These are for people. I'll just I'll give them to you. You'll be my you'll be <laughs> I'll be your mom and you'll be my student with um, you'll be my okay. child with disability, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. So say I want you to go to the market. Okay. This was something people with intellectual disabilities couldn't do and or autism. And their mom said, This is something we want our children to do. So we said, you know what? We made these cards, and so we have onions for 50 pesawa and one CD, tomatoes 50 pesawa, 20 pesawa, 30 pesawa, mango, same kind of thing. We have about, every family has about 15 different kinds of food items. Okay. And then for every food item, there's three different cards. Wow. So I want you to go to the market, and I want you to bring me 30 pesawa of mango, 50 pesawa of tomato, and mm, 20 pesawa of, uh, no, 50 pesos of mango, okay? So go. Well, it's hard for us. We might write it down just like you started <laughs> to do. But say you're a student with intellectual disabilities or autism and you can't remember it. So you might say, okay, now they have the card. So the mom will basically create a shopping list. Okay. I'm your mom, you're my child. So as I said, I wanted 30p of mango, I wanted 50p of tomato, and I wanted 50p of onion. So here, dear, go to the market. Oh, wrong hand. <laughs> go to the market and buy those. So then the children now are going to the market. This is happening all over Ghana. In in Koko, Kofurudia, Efujwasi, Kumasi, Sunyani, Cape, all over Ghana. Uh, and they go to the market. The market women who went eight years ago were fearful of these children. Mm -hmm. Accept them. Sell them. They say, I have the mango today. I have the... the okay, sure, no, that screen's Yeah. Now. There we go. So there the children are choosing what they're going to help their mom with. Now you're going to see them in the market, and the market women is now selling that child. There we go. Okay. Wow. Women who wouldn't be willing to actually even interact with, with them. them. Now these market cards. This is one of uh, our amazing teachers, Belinda Bukhari. And uh, she's been using the market card. She's the first teacher we started working with. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's cool <laughs> stuff, you know. <laughs> Belinda is a unit school teacher. And unit schools are something different for Ghana that started actually 10 years ago. This is their 10th anniversary. Okay. And there are two or three classrooms on a general ed, a regular ed mm -hmm. classroom, mm -hmm. a campus. Okay. So over the 10 years, we've had kids who are typically developing, going to school, and two classrooms over are kids with autism and intellectual disabilities. And these seven-year-olds are now 17. And they've grown up with, children, with other students with disabilities, playing during recess, perhaps first not, but now playing during recess. And so my hope is that these unit schools will actually help those now 17-year-olds realize that these are just people. 
<laughs> right? They're just a bit different, as we all are. Well, what you guys do is amazing. And what are some of the challenges you face so far? Uh, I guess some of the challenges, I, I hate to tell a sad story, but, you know, we met a boy who had a simple cleft Cliff. lip. Uh, and it's not a big deal in the United States. Uh, most people think we don't have children. Yeah, this is the surgery. This is Dr. Amboma, who is the chief of uh, craniofacial surgery at uh, Corlebu. Okay. This is a two and a half year old being operated on. This is us going into Corlebu Hospital. So <clears throat> we met, the, the surgeries are incredible here. Nobody has to wait for an, an outside European or American group to come. To come. Yep, they're incredible here. And we've seen, I've seen them now over eight years. Okay. Um, so this little boy was born nine months ago. And we were here in May, we saw the boy. And he was a beautiful boy. We knew that with just some stitches, he'd be beautiful, even more beautiful without the cleft. And um, the mom, sad story, it's an old school kind of family. Okay. The, the mom was kicked out of the home by her husband. Her in-laws kicked her out. They talked about her being a, an evil, having evil genes, being cursed, the boy being this beautiful boy. <laughs> being an evil boy. And then his sister, who's 15, was recently kicked out of her school because the in-laws thought that she must also have something evil about her. It's just a terrible, terrible story. Um, and that's some of the challenges. How to reach, I mean, people tell me, Kate, stop. There's some people that are older that you can't reach. But I'm hoping that maybe the husband at, will understand that maybe there's other things they can do for that child. And those kind of children, they can become doctors and lawyers. And I know I worked, I'm a lawyer as well, and I worked as a lawyer who had a terrible stammer. And he was a, a litigator, he was a barrister. <laughs> and he would say before we went into court, he would say to the judge, just and all of us, just so you know, I may stammer, but I will get it out and please wait for me. And he had much more money than any of us. He was much more <laughs> successful than any of us. <laughs> Uh, well, are there any other challenges apart from the um, stigma and people shunning away from sure. these persons with disability? Sure. I think one of the things that I've talked about the unit schools, which really are a new wave of bringing, integrating mm. these students with disabilities with general ed kids, right? And I think that one of the stigmas is the unit schools are so new that they're not fully supported by the Ministry of Education. So they're part of the Ministry of Education, part of the Division of Special Education, but the teachers work so hard and there's a little, um, there's less um, fees, uh, allowances, and motivation things okay. going to them. And they really are the ones that are on the, the cusp of change for people with disabilities in Ghana, as are the cleft palate um, teachers, uh, the cleft palate um, surgeons. Um, we, uh, from a speech therapy point of view, there's a <coughs> lack of materials in Ghana. Can I give this to you? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, one of our colleagues for the last eight years is Dr. Uh, Albert Osebajina, who's okay. a speech therapist mm -hmm. who was trained in the United States. And he developed this Qi articulation test, which is just one of the tools speech therapists need. And what I love about this is the pictures are Ghanaian. It's okay. all Ghanaian. And it's all the sounds that you need. So a cleft palate speech therapist would need it. Anybody working with unclear speech with children or adults who speak chi would need it. Okay. So, okay. so uh, that's you know the, the beginnings of new tools for mm. people who speak um, other than English. We can't bring our US tools over here. Okay. They're not as good as the Ghanaian created tools. OK, so Alicia, will you come back to Ghana? <laughs> of course, of course. Um, my family, is, my father's family actually is from Nigeria, yeah. so I feel a special connection okay. here to Africa. And I just want to come back to, to see the progression and the change of people's minds towards people with disabilities. And also maybe in a few years when I get more <laughs> experience and come back in, you know, work with the new speech, pro the speech therapy program that's starting here. Uh -huh. Um, so that would be an amazing opportunity. So of course, of course, I'm coming back. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I did want to mention the new speech therapy program mm -hmm. that's starting. So at the University of Ghana, okay. at Korlebu in the medical school, there's three Ghanaian speech language therapists who are, going, who are now lecturers. Okay. And the program will start in January. Many people know Nanya, Nana Akuya uh, Uusu. Then, yeah, you probably know her. I'm sure she's been on TV. Everybody says, I've seen you on TV. <laughs> and then uh, Clement Amposa and then um, Josephine Bampo, okay. who are all trained in the UK 
and have been back in Ghana. Nana has been a speech language therapist for many years, very experienced, and um, Clement and Josephine are as well, and they will be the lecturers, and I will be uh, supporting them. Teachers College, Columbia University will be in okay. collaborating with them. Okay, so um, before you leave us, um, anything, any final words you want to say to people watching you now? I guess what I would like to say is uh, what you started out with is the truth. Disability mm -hmm. is not inability. <laughs> and it may take a little longer. Some of us are more clever than others, but some people learn at a deeper level. And to remember that every family has disabilities. Every single family that I have ever met, and I'm old now, and I've <laughs> met many families. So it's just the way it is in the world. Okay, right. Thank you. I think what you guys do is totally amazing. My guests have been um, Professor Catherine Crowley um, and Alicia Price. Do stay tuned. The Breakfast Show continues. Yeah,